live. Um, all right, so, oh, by the way, today we're picking up uh, Jake Rich. Uh, looks like he's got the camera pointed on me right now. Let's meet him real quick. Adventure begins. The adventure begins. Everybody meet Jake. Oh, yeah, he travels pretty light. Just, Man, uh, I would never take a bag like this, except I'm going to Melbourne for like a week of, to shoot a film. Oh, uh, okay. So, like, I live, in, I live outside of Sydney. Here, I'll like, give you when in. When I get back, I'm like, yeah. pretty much on the go. Yeah, I feel ya. By the way, we should probably figure out uh, where we're going. Um, and my vocal cords, I feel like they're so dry because we've been talking nonstop. We've just been chatting, we've just been catching up, like um, sharing ideas and just talking YouTube, you know, like yeah. obviously to get better at doing yeah. this whole YouTube thing. But it's, it, it's, 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 it's fun to be reunited with another creator, that's for sure. We're doing a, uh, a necessary stop. I know I told you guys I was gonna do like a, a, a diet, but <laughs> when in Rome, you know, yep. do as the Romans. So we're stopping in and out with uh, Jake Rich, Boom. who you guys met earlier this morning and I feel like I'm gonna lose my voice out here in the desert it's super dry and we've been talking non-stop about all kinds of stuff and actually he's been inspiring me and teaching me some some you know tips and tricks of the trade so we're gonna we're gonna do some cool stuff together so oh, hell yeah uh, we this because we don't have this second time in and out on this trip yeah Sick. <laughs> <laughs> This is lunch. Uh, if you guys uh, don't know, this is my favorite burger. Double double. Animal style extra pickles, mustard instead of spread. Uh, what'd you get, Jake? I think I got number two. Oh, it's all new to me, man. Sorry. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't give you the, the rundown. It's just, I know that there's a patty on there, there's some lettuce, some cheese, and it's, it's a burger. It's my favorite <laughs> there so you far. Go. And uh, I went with uh, animal fries, which is a pretty gutsy move there. Pretty bold. It, that looks, that looks delicious. <laughs> so uh, me and Jake are uh, leaving in and out We ran into some viewers. Hi. Hey, what's up everybody? T uh, tell me your names again. I'm Dominic. Dominic? I'm Danny Gutierrez. Cool. Good morning to my name's Jesse. Sweet, and you guys are just uh, ripping around on the quads out yeah, in Glamis? Glamis. That's cool. Man, I gotta take you guys again on the quads because it's super fun. Is it that is. Uh, uh, your favorite thing to do on the weekends? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's like, um, it's my first time, but I've been there Dominic is my times. friend, and like, you know, he invited us with his family, so cool. We went out there and we just had a good time. Yeah, right on. Well, high five for subscribing. Woo! Nice to meet you guys. <laughs> we made it out here. All right, what are your first thoughts on uh, Salvation Mountain? Man, it's incredible. Yeah. It's absolutely incredible. Like, I'm just I'm just in awe of this. Like, yeah. I feel like I'm at someone's, like, it's kind of like a gallery. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, brief story on this place. Um, basically, this was a creation uh, from a guy who passed away. Um, it is designated as like a, a special place in California. I forget the specifics, but there's information here if you do come. But I will just let the place do the talking for itself because this is really a one of a kind place. This is the parking area of Salvation Mountain. There are multiple vehicles parked. There's a little scooter, uh, there is a boat over there, and then the main attraction, of course, is behind it, the Salvation Mountain. Let's go have a peek. Would you tell me your name and uh, where you live? I'm Augie Sedora. I'm a resident of Nyland. Been here since 1947. That's amazing. And Nyland, by the way, is this whole area for anyone who Nyland, didn't know? Nyland, yeah. This is all 92257. It stretches all the way from here between here and Calipatria and goes all the way up to the county line. That's it includes Bombay Beach, the Fountain of Youth, and uh, all the other areas. Uh, would you tell me, uh, you, you knew Leonard when he was... Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was quite a, quite a personality. <laughs> yeah. So what, what, in your opinion, makes this place so special? Uh, this is one man's dream. 
he, uh, he was telling me, he says, it, it, there was no religion in his life at all until after he crashed his balloon, which kind of looked like what's up here. Oh, okay. And he had a scripture written on it. And when he crashed his balloon, he ended up out here not knowing what to do, and then his vision came to him, and then he started building this thing. I know the the one individual is with me. We just took a lot of meals out to uh, Slab City, but uh, he's one of the priests out at Calipatria. Uh -huh. He wanted. He says we got a lot of meals here. We want to give away, so we just did that. But uh, Leonard got along with everybody. You look back here at these two old vehicles. Those were his original vehicles back there, and one of those was put on a truck and taken back to Chicago, and I think it was uh, one of the morning shows on uh, internet or national TV that he was on. And they flew him out there, and they flew him back, and they brought his truck back. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. And he would have those trucks in the parade, the Nyland Tomato Festival parade, every year oh, until fun. he was gone. That's fun. Yeah, he was quite a character. This place is, is a special place out here. Uh, so how does it work uh, with the, there's a lot of people who come in the winter time? Yes. And hang out for the winter? They, they'll come out here in the winter and, uh, for example, right now we might have uh, less than a thousand indigenous people out here, and they call them Slab City. And uh, at one time, my sister was the postmaster in Nyland during her time, she said the population would increase to uh, 7,000 for the Nyland area. Wow. So that's uh, quite a bit of people that would come in. It's dropped significantly lately. Uh, I don't know why. I think it's just the, the economy that maybe they just can't get out here. It doesn't cost nothing to live here. Yeah. you got to be able to live off the grid. You have solar mic out there that'll provide you electricity or ways to make your own electricity. And you go into town and get water or somebody will deliver it for you for a fee. So it's a... Uh, and, and, what, and what would you say that uh, your favorite places in the uh, Slab City are to, to stop by and visit or take people to? Right here. Mm -hmm. Right here. Yeah. Uh, when Leonard was still alive, um, California Gold, uh, the individual that... Hulhauser? He came out here and we sat out here and talked one time and he says, did you know that this is the ninth most visited place in California? Wow! Ninth most visited, that's amazing! Ninth. At that time, and that was probably about eight, nine years ago. Wow. At Hauser, just before he passed away. Wow. Uh, and uh, the number... at one time, Nyland itself was the tomato capital of the world. Amazing. And Hauser was telling me his statistics. He said Nyland produced approximately 80% of the tomatoes consumed in the United States during the winter crops. That was September, October, November, December, and January. Wow. And if you could stand right here, and as far as you could see, down below, past that canal down there, it was tomatoes. All right, so I got the inside scoop on this place. It's, it's very interesting how this works. I guess the local sheriff has like a special kind of unwritten rule kind of deal because they're kind of I don't want to say homeless people but some like drifter kind of people and essentially they're squatting out here so it's like they're out here <laughs> they're away from this town over there and they're kind of like as long as they have their space and they kind of keep to himself then they don't have to come into the town and not all of them but uh, some of the you know people do drugs out here and things like that so they kind of just allow it to exist out here and it just kind of works in a strange kind of way so that was a really cool piece of information that I learned um, and there are several different groups trying to buy up different uh, parts of this so this whole thing Salvation Mountain uh, Inc the nonprofit they're trying to purchase this little land and uh, it's like the state kind of owns a property but also it's owned by like a teacher's group. I forget, I should have asked him to say it on camera, but um, yeah, it's cool. It's like no man's land out here. Um, what do you think, dude? Man, he knew so much stuff that guy. <laughs> it's cool. Dude. Man, this is like a photographer's dream. Isn't it cool? Yeah. Yeah. I've been just trying to find, I've been finding these awesome shots. Like, <laughs> this is, it's like Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. Really. Dude, just imagine if there were more places like this where you could do whatever you wanted on, on, on land that nobody really owned and you can just make whatever your heart desires. Like, wouldn't that be nuts? Like, what kind of a world? You just show up someplace and be like, this is mine. Yeah. You know, like, I'm going to make a, a, a giant painted mountain and yeah. then just do it. So, yeah. 
Uh, if you guys are interested, coming out to Slab City, uh, you can move here. It's 120 degrees in the summertime. What do you think, guys? Should we have more public spaces like this where just any person with any kind of creative idea can come and create and make whatever they want without owning the land? As it says, stay on the uh, yellow brick road. By the way, it's a little slippery up here. They almost fell wearing sandals. Mm -hmm.